Welcome to my new video series, Practical Bash and Terminal Skills. So this series is not gonna be academic at all. It really is very, very hands-on, very practical. We won't go through all these kinds of theoretical concepts, but we'll only cover the kind of stuff that has real life applications that you will need every day. For part one, we're talking about exit codes and chaining commands. You will notice that my terminal looks a bit uh, different than usual because usually I have it optimized to my own workflow. But right now, all these kind of optimizations and third party tools, they distract from the core skills. And I want to show you that what I'm teaching you here does not depend on any kind of specific configuration or tools, but any bash compatible shell will do. I'm using bash here, but there's a wide variety of bash compatible shells that you could use. So let's dive right in. Exit codes. Any command that you run in bash has an exit code. So for a simple command, I'm just using echo hello world. So this is a command. Let's run it. It does something. It prints hello world into uh, the terminal. An echo is one that usually succeeds. So as I claimed, this had an exit code. What does that mean? How can we inspect that? So we can use echo itself and access the dollar question mark variable and dollar question mark variable always saves the exit code of the last command you ran so let's see what uh, we get out of echo dollar question mark a zero and zero is a very good here zero means it succeeded so very common exit codes that you have is zero for successful one for not successful however any non-zero exit code means not successful so you could have something like 127 all these kinds of kind of uh, different exit codes and sometimes they have specific meaning but most important is to know zero means the command was successful anything that's not zero means it was not successful so let's get an example for an unsuccessful command let's use the cat command which uh, prints the contents of a file not just files but for now files so let's say wrong file.txt this is a file that definitely doesn't exist and indeed, it says no such file or directory. So now if we do echo dollar again, we can see that the exit code is one. So as I claimed before, we can see zero is successful, one is not successful. So this gets very interesting when you wanna run multiple commands in succession and have different behavior based on whether one succeeds or fails. So let's start with the, the simplest of chains. Let's run echo foo, put a semicolon here and run echo bar. So what do you expect is going to happen? We run both commands in succession. Okay, but they were also both successful. So let's try and replace echo foo with something that's definitely gonna fail, like cat wrong file. Let's see. Okay, cat wrong file, no such file or directory, but we still printed bar. So apparently if you use the semicolon, every command will run regardless of whether they succeed or they fail. So very similar to how we could uh, do this in uh, many programming languages, we can replace the semicolon with the AND operator, double AND operator. And let's see what happens. Okay, we're no longer getting our echo bar. So it seems because the uh, first command failed, we never got to the second command. So let's verify this by using something that succeeds. Let's say echo foo. And indeed, we do get to echo bar. Let me just write clear here to clear the terminal. So what if we want the opposite behavior? What if whenever something fails, we want to run the specific command, but not if it succeeds? So let's say echo foo and put the or operator, echo, sorry, echo bar. In this case, we're printing foo because foo succeeded and there was no need to run bar. So let's put a command here again that fails. So cat wrong file, then cat failed. So now there was a need to run echo bar. And whether or not these commands succeeded or failed was determined based on their exit code. So let's get into some real life applications. If there's one takeaway from this video, it should really be this. One of the commands that I run every day is something like this, test or tests.sh and git push. So this simple command can prevent you from from pushing something onto your trunk or branch or whatever you're pushing to that will break the build. So this of course requires that you have some sort of a script that runs all your tests in the same fashion that they would run on CI. But if you do, 
and this is a very good way to prevent you from pushing something that'll break the build and annoy others. There's also a practical application for the OR operator. So let's say tests.sh or cleanup.sh. So depending on what your tests do, they might have a cleanup script at the end, but if they fail somewhere in between, they might not run the cleanup. So you can run this command and whenever they fail, they would run uh, the cleanup. So this was part one. As you noticed, we did this. We didn't use any kind of script files, any kind of text editor. We just did this right in our bash terminal itself. And this is really cool about bash that anything that you can script, you can also run straight in your terminal. But this is, of course, only practical for trying things out and for doing things in line. Uh, but if, for example, this test.sh uh, would be a script, we need to get into scripts. And this is going to come up in video two. See you then.